Headed for the wall. Don't let it hit the wall. Hello, I'm Bruce Janney, and today in Homemade Science, we're going to take a look at some more atmospheric powered cars using the atmosphere to store potential energy to drive a small vehicle. Now, before we use these large water squirters, this time we're going to try it with these much smaller syringes. Now, this is the first vehicle that I made, and it worked fairly well. This piece is currently going about 200 feet. Now this water squirter has a capacity of about 200 milliliters. Our first attempt is gonna be with this syringe, which has a capacity of about 12. No matter the size, the concept is the same. Seal the end of the tube and pull out the plunger and you create a vacuum inside that tube and it's the atmospheric pressure pushing that plunger back in again that's going to drive the car. All right, we have the car built. Let's take a look at it, and then we'll give it a few runs. The body is plywood. The wheels are these CDs that are mounted on these wooden blocks. The axle is a wooden dowel, and they're supported by these little blocks here. The block has a groove cut in it, and then a plastic tube was glued into that channel. Putting it back together again, the wheels are simply held in place by friction. There we go. Next, I'll add some rubber bands to give the wheels some additional traction. To power it, a string runs from the plunger to the axle. The string has an eyelid on it, which catches in this small hole. We can wind it up about three times, and then it's ready to go. I was hoping to do a little better. We're getting about 20 to 25 feet. Well, we did get some movement out of it, but I think it's a little bit too underpowered with this 12. So I think we're gonna try it again, this time with a 20. It's still the same vehicle. It just has a larger syringe on it. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I hope it's getting better. Now we're hitting about 45 feet. I thought I'd update this one more time. Originally, I started out with this 12 milliliter syringe, then we went to a 20. Now I'm gonna try it with a 40. Now to do that, I had to change the back axle. The axle is now a metal bar, which is reduced in size in the center. This will give me more turns on the axle, but less torque on the wheels. I found the easiest way to wind it up is simply to move it across the table. Lighting fast to you. Well, that's a good bit farther than the other one. With the longer distances, now we're having trouble controlling it in the hallways. And boop, right there it goes. Whoa! Back down to the gym where it's wide open, our best runs are about 90 to 100 feet. Now, so far we've been going directly from the syringe to the rear axle. I thought maybe a pulley system could give us additional distance. The plunger is now pulling on an axle with a larger pulley on it, 
down to a smaller one, that should decrease the torque, but it should increase the distance that it would travel. This is using the 20 milliliter syringe and we're getting about 22 to 23 feet. Well that was certainly disappointing. I figured the rubber band wouldn't be very efficient, but the rolling resistance doesn't feel that bad. Well, obviously, this one's going to take some more work. I have some ideas, but if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them down in the comments. Now, I do hope to make improvements in all these vehicles and hopefully share them with you in the future. In the meantime, if you want to see more vehicles that are powered by the atmosphere or rubber band powered cars, please check out the other videos on my channel. In the meantime, I want to thank you for watching and come back and see me again. Okay, bye.